Uh, okay, I was waiting for my spot, now I got this I make to your top five, that's a top six I refuse to keep saying that it's my time Don't that shit sound like a side bitch Send a text message to my side chick She sent a text back where it's my dick All my side hoes got flip phones Old school bitch, you ain't about to screenshot shit If I pull up and something, it'll work out You do pull ups for nothing, it don't work out I need a pull up or something if I splurge out Hot shit on everybody till I turned out, uh Lately I've been posting in my birdhouse Niggas parrot my flow, I hear it chirp out So I fuck that canary, she gobbled a worm in the seeds I will leave and she burp out, uh Alright, welcome to We Ain't No Stupids. It is me, the Zen Master, to my left. B, moving. General boss, for all those that do give a fuck. Ah, uh, yes, and I do believe everyone gives a fuck. Yeah. It's an interesting uh, episode here. We are recording this on the same night as the fucking Walking Dead mid season premiere, and we're not going to watch it because we're recording the podcast. See how much we love you guys? Devoted motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Because ain't tonight supposed to be uh, the night when Alexandria meets the Kingdom and they link up? I don't know. Kingdom. I legit stayed away from stayed all away trailers. From yeah, I'll be legit. on that shit too. Legit. Don't have but no I, clue. I had to watch that shit though. It was like... I had no clue. I can tell you this though. That motherfucking comic book. Well, how far are you? I don't know how far, what issue I am, I'm in, but um, they're in the jail. And, oh, okay. And... They just got rid of the murderer in the jail. Yeah, man, Herschel had a fucking hard life. <laughs> Herschel's life was hard, bro. I mean, what happened to Herschel in the jail? Herschel in jail? No, just Herschel losing his family from Jump Street. Like he had, he had three daughters, three daughters, uh, two sons. He had a squad. Yeah, they went on a TV show, were they? Um, I remember he had a family in a TV show, but he lost them brutally. Oh, yeah, you know what? You right. The, the the farm was deep. Yeah, it was. And they just end up being just Maggie and her sister. Yeah, yeah, but it it was brutal, man. Some jail, some did when they went to the jail. You know, they had the people in the jail that was yeah. still in the comic book. So they had the the four guys that was locked up in the jail cell, but they lied about what they was convicted for. And all this stuff. So, the end to find out the one that said he there for tax invasion off with the glasses had the whole regular thing. Old white guy. And he he when he caught the girls by themselves, he cut them bitches' heads off. Yes. Oh, so nigga was a straight up psychopath. Psycho, and they couldn't figure out who did it. The big black guy was in there for murder, but he was like, "Yeah, if you're not my my girlfriend or uh, her uh, boyfriend, then you ain't got nothing to worry about." Mm. It's like, huh? But they end up lining them up. Yeah, Rick Wife. I like her in the comic book. She's a whole lot more saner. Mine makes a little bit more sense to me. She ain't off the chain. But yeah, great jump though. Great jump. I'm happy I'm reading it. Am I the only one that thinks that Negan is a good guy? Like, he's a, he's a stand-up brother. Am I the only one that feels this way? Negan and Rick ain't different. True! Like, that's some real no, shit. Yeah, yeah, they're not it, different. It, it, it's just that Negan way. just got a shitload of people that ride or die with him. I think no. I think the difference is kind of like a maturity level. Like Negan's seen enough shit to where he knows this is the only way this shit works, and just that Rick just hasn't gotten there yet. Like he just hasn't seen the enough to be like, okay, cool, killing everybody ain't gonna work. We need to start because he's at the point. He, he's at the kill everybody point. Is Rick still suffering the two weeks that he lost from the beginning? Is these two weeks still detrimental that he's still playing catch up with the process of what's what needs to be going on? I just think it kind of goes on how many people you come across. That's the thing he hasn't, he hasn't come across as many people as Negan has. No. I think that's what it is. Yeah. He couldn't have. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, oh, it's like I've been telling motherfuckers the, the saviors, at least in the TV show, because they say that they basically made the TV show because of Negan. The whole show been building up to them to get to Negan. That like they wouldn't have made the show. Saviors been around since season one. Yeah. I don't want to say season one, but like. Bruh, season one. I would say like season like the first no it was season 2 they made it to the barn but there was that store up the street that's when Rick killed his first person I don't think they were saviors they were fucking saviors no I think the first time we saw saviors was um that time when it was Rick Michonne and Carl and they were in that suburban neighborhood that was 
empty and they all just split up and was searching the houses and shit mm-hmm. and uh Rick was asleep in one of the houses oh and they ran and in they there. ran up in there and he Rick, like, yeah, Rick was hurt this was right after the um, yeah. governor the governor yeah. went to their ass and everybody was split up no nah, yeah, Rick rolled under the bed and them dudes yeah but they, they, these called dudes, dibs them dudes that was in the store that ran up on them had guns truck whole shebang they was already was they on a truck or a bike they might was on a bike but they would. I, I got to go back and look at it. I don't think they would say that though. I'm gonna go back and look at it because if they had them, any kind of indication, I'm gonna go back and look at it. But it's like when you see like, but when you listen to like the reputation, like the people would talk about them and all. It, it would always be like you know, it, it was. It's like they would do. It's like they, what they were doing with the shit we were seeing Rick do like later on. Like so, it's like when they first met Rick, they was on some kill everybody type shit. You know what I'm saying? Then like they ended up going to terminus. You hear the terminus people talk about. Uh, we opened our doors to them and they killed everybody and they left. You know, and then like after a while and it's like so you see the next season you'll see when um that's when Rick is like, We gotta kill everybody. So it's like Rick is following in Negan's footsteps. Like I didn't even realize that the people that took over Terminus was saviors. That big dude in the the Connex box was definitely a biker. He was one of the biker gang guys. Oh no, 'cause they um no what it was was uh the saviors went to Terminus and fucked them up and left. And then the Terminus people, so the, originally Remember they kept one in the Connex box. He was a giant guy. Oh, okay. He was a giant. Guy. And he was holding him prisoner. Mm-hmm. Okay, I didn't catch that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, so it's like it's like the shit they be doing is like Rick ends up doing it next. So it's like at first they was like just going around bullying and just stealing shit and. Rick went on that, but like the next season he was stealing shit. And then you hear about the Terminus say, oh, they showed up and they got them killed everybody. Then that same season, they Rick took them guns out. They they went and found the guns they hid, and they was all like, whoa, where you going? So we got to go back. We got to kill them all. So it's like he's slowly doing what they're doing. So now fucking you see Negan's creating a network, and what is Rick doing right now? He's going to Alexandria. He's in Alexandria. He's going to the kingdom. He's going to go to the. Uh, to the all girl island, he's trying to make a motherfucking network the same way Negan did. He's doing the same shit Negan's doing, just he's just behind. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. So you think Negan got broke? I want to know the story of Negan. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. All, I, all I seen was he was a car salesman before everything went bad. He was a car salesman. His wife had cancer or something, and she was in the hospital doing all of this stuff when it happened, when everything started to go to hell. And legit, her his first kill was his wife, mm. and that's why the bat name is Lucille. Cause that's his okay. wife's name. I heard about the bat being named out of his wife, mm-hmm. and that he was like a football coach or some shit. Yeah. That's when he got out his goddamn his team working and shit. Mm. It makes sense though, man. But I would love to hear his story though. They gonna have to eventually. Yeah, so yeah, I had to unlearn my lesson about watching previews. Cause I feel like we putting too much inside the previews and shit. No, it's because we know what to look for, and then we try to put pieces together, yeah. and then Maybe it, be takes, right to. it takes the it takes the um, fire to... yeah. It's like when I went to go see Split. It's like I saw a, enough of the preview to know that it was a dude that kidnapped girls, and he had split personalities. And I stopped the preview right there because my homeboy was like, "You got to see this preview." And he played it, and I said, "Stop it right there! No, I don't want to see it no more. I'm going to see this fucking movie." Yeah. And uh, I went to see it, and I thought it was dope. And um, afterwards, I talked to somebody, and I was like, have you seen Split yet? He was like, nah, but I'm interested in seeing the uh, 24th personality. And I was like, 20, that's in the previews? And I was like, yeah. I was like, see, that's like dope to figure out by watching the movie. I'm mm-hmm. like, why would they put that in the preview? It's like, they just put too much in there. Yeah. Then um, I watched it. Have you seen the preview for uh, Girl Trip? Nope. Uh, well, they basically... You know who Will Packer is? Will Packer. Will Packer. Will Packer. Right, well, he's a producer. He's a movie producer. And, like, basically... Yes. You told 80, me this before. Yeah. Okay. 80% of the good black movies that came out over the past, I'll say, about eight years, Will Packer produced it. And uh, he, got a, he got another movie coming out called Girl Trip. And, basically, it's a female version of The Hangover. That's what it is. Is it? It's Queen Latifah, Jada Pickett-Smith, Regina Hall, and some new girl. 
and uh, they go to the Essence Festival. Oh, man, he did all these. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Think like a man, ride along, almost Christmas, good deed, no good deed, okay. Didn't he do um, Straight Outta Compton? Is that on his filmography? Uh, man, I was just breezing through. Stomp the Yard, uh, Obsessed, uh, Motives. God dang. About yeah. Last Night. No, I don't see Straight Outta Compton. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, so yeah, he he be working. Yeah, yeah. And he makes good quality shit, which is like, it's difficult to find good. He also makes some bad movies. shit now. Stomp the Yard. Hey, he, got, the, uh, he got a couple of exploitation joints in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'll admit. Three can play the game. Uh, uh, these, these, uh, Look, you gotta lead it. You gotta ignore them straight to DVD sequels, all right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, the wedding ring was decent. I like that. One. So him and Kevin Hart like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. He was saying that uh, he was trying to put Kevin Hart on at first. The studio was going to try to um. Use them. They were like they didn't see the star power in them. Mm-hmm. And I forgot what uh what the first movie they made together. Was. I think we was thinking like a man. Yeah, he just started throwing, kept kept throwing them and shit. Yeah, it worked for Kevin. Good God. <clears throat> and that's a hard working motherfucker right there. He is the uh, I guess the movie entertainer, Floyd Mayweather ish. Yeah. Hard work, dedication. Yeah, hard work. Yeah. So you ain't going to outwork me, goddammit. Hell no. Hell no. And he got her to be trying to perfect what he already doing. I mean, the nigga can retire. I found out how much money that motherfucker had. Like, shit, why do you still... <laughs> it's for the love. He, he he up there, though, man. It's like, yo, when you're dead, why? Man, and he's doing man. it with ease. Yo, you know this motherfucker sold out a soccer stadium. Yeah. That's in cool. Australia. That's some Beyonce shit, man. That is fucking amazing. That's some Beyonce, Metallica <laughs> fucking shit, man. Cause, <laughs> well, <clears throat> have you heard of a, uh, you remember, you remember uh, Bob Johnson, right? No. He was the original owner of BET before he sold it? I gotta so, see his face. So back when um, BET was BET, it was owned by Bob Johnson. Okay, I know the, who you talking, to, who took his place? The lady? Yeah. Yes, okay. Alright, got you. I think he sold it to buy a car, if I'm not mistaken. She just a president long time. But, um. Because he sold that shit early in the game, sold it in the 90s. Yes, okay. His face ring a bell. Yeah. yeah. Well, Bob Johnson's newest uh, venture is uh, the UMC, the Urban Movie Channel, which is basically it's Netflix. Mm-hmm. But it's a. Uh, all black shit. Mm. There's things that's going to entertain black people. And so, uh, I was looking into it. The shit costs $5 a month. He better have a bunch of history fucking shit up there for me. It's a bunch of shit up there. It's like, it's a, he can't... Now, I don't want to take all these dead on Negro books and make movies out of, um... It's, it's like a lot going songs. on. Oh, I lost my dog. My, <laughs> she got down to my truck. I, I can't stand a, these hip-hop it's a lot of shit up there, man. It was a uh, cause I mean I didn't go to, go through tracks like you can just go there and just browse and see like some of the titles they have, the shit they have, in there. and it's like a lot of they got like a lot of documentaries, a lot of yeah, comedies and I shit. Mean. So basically, the month for the after I get situated, you know what I'm saying? After I do your thug fizzle, do my fuck fizzle, fuck fizzle, man. and get situated and shit, I'm getting that motherfucker. It's bad hours a month, but the only problem is like it's right now it's in the beginning stages, so it's just a website. So you got you got like how mm-hmm. Netflix started out. You, you mm-hmm. had to go to Netflix.com before they had apps. Yeah, he ain't got no apps or nothing like that yet. That shouldn't take no long time for. They were talking about like next year sometime have it everywhere because like they got a Apple TV and Roku app. So like if you got those two, then you can watch them on your TV screen. But other oh, than that, that's solid. Know. Okay, that's solid enough then. Cause when shit get broken down in my house, that's I think we're gonna go the Roku app, the Roku way. But yeah, I'm getting out of cable, getting out of cable business. I don't look at I look at Netflix more than I look at anything, and I just gotta be able to catch my TV shows legally. Yeah, that's real. That's it. And I got too many shows I fucking watch. Like the hundred came back on. I don't know if you look at the hundred. No. 
But yes, the hundred came back on, so shit, man, I gotta see the hundred. I got a lot Man, of shit. I swear I tried to watch that motherfucking Death Note. Man, you got to give it Dude, I'm on like episode seventeen. This shit is whack, right? This it's, shit is you have to give this it. This shit man. is whizzy. You have to give it. But you know what man. you know what I've noticed though, what I think it is, it's kinda like, alright, I can compare it to being a wrestling fan. Like as a wrestling fan, I know there's certain things you can watch. This for everybody, like Stone Cold, Steve Austin, and The Rock. Anybody can watch the Goldberg. Anybody can watch those guys and be entertained. You don't have to be a wrestling fan to enjoy that shit. But certain, but most of it is like I can watch it because I'm a wrestling fan. So like when I see the little flaws and all that stuff, I can let it slide. When I can see the motherfucking the shit that gets done a million times, I can watch it. Yeah, when, even when you can tell the storyline that's about to but happen. About to happen, I can watch, still it watch it as yeah. a wrestling fan. You know what I'm saying? I'm letting it slide. Right. Death Note is. You thought it was gonna surprise you? You was, yeah. you had expectations. Right. Like no, it wasn't. That. Just the, Death Note is one of those animes where you have to be an anime fan to enjoy it. Because everything that I don't like about anime is like so slapping you in the face when you watch this shit. And it's like everything that I cannot fucking stand. Small example, please, sir. Uh, talking to themselves like we can't figure out what, what the fuck, the fuck they're going. thinking. Okay, I got you, got you. But the plan was already. Yeah, yeah. and it's like, and it's, it's the thing that makes it even more insulting is this this shit. Death Note is obviously for teenagers. Like, you think the teenagers are that stupid that you gotta, oh my god, he just opened the door. When he opens the door, he'll see that I have a pencil in my hand. If he sees the pencil, then he'll know that I was writing something. So, I must hide this pencil. Dude, just... The door is sounding and have him hide the pencil real fast. We got it. It was it was, it was it was definitely that. Yeah, and they was. spent fucking five minutes. It was minutes. a bunch of unnecessary. Yeah, you know. Because all this could have, like I, I told, like I told them on the other podcast, all this could have been avoided if he would have just fucking left. Didn't toy with the cops. Just fucking left. You still would have had the powers. You still would have did what you wanted to do. You could have still got your mission accomplished and just left. You didn't have well, to sit there and toy with them. Well, the thing was that they, they cleaned that up. Hmm. They, they mess it back up. No, no, they cleaned it. No, they cleaned it up early because they uh because he said the dude L said off jump he hates to lose, so that's all it was. It was just like yeah, it, but it was saying? unnecessary. I mean, yeah, but I mean like that's how he got him though. It was just like you know just that's it. He made it a game. Yeah, and he taunted him and shit, and that's what it. So it, it didn't become about getting away with it anymore. It became about winning. They want the mission. Yeah, yeah it was just about it. getting over on him. Yeah. Yeah. So you didn't get to the second. So he, like he said, he uh, he of, called him. Like he said, he he thinks he's God. So he's like, I'm gonna toy with that, and that's what about you know what I'm saying? Because then you thought his goal was he wanted to be the new God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but he lost track of that fucking with L so much. No, is him fucking with L is his God complex because he feels like he's in control, and L proves he's not. Yeah. Because it's like I can do anything, but oh, I I can't find out his fucking name. To you know what I'm saying? I'm on episode 18. So basically, I'm at the point where uh, his his he, his girlfriend stalker bitch. Oh, that's what kept me into it. There's two things kept me into it. Like I said, I was about to stop watching it, but when the the demon had the apple withdrawals, yes, and he was acting he like was a fucking yeah, <laughs> he was acting like a motherfucking crackhead. That was funny as shit. <laughs> that kept me. And then uh, when the girl showed up, because mm-hmm. that's a concept that I came up with in like 2008. For a movie that uh, I never wrote, but I wanted to make a movie where there'll be a uh, a female psychopath serial killer, and would, she would have a. Uh, I would say, do you really want to say this? Oh, yeah, because you're no more. okay. Because uh, right, you're destined for yeah. great things. I'm just wonder. And like I said, but it's like I said, it's in it's in Death Note. Like I want to have a, a psychopath female serial killer, but I want to give her a, a insane fan. I know that serial killers be having fans. Like, they have fan clubs and shit. Mm-hmm. They, like, Charles Manson got more fan mail yeah, than anybody in the yeah. history, you know yeah. what I'm saying, of America. Like, he has the most, more fan mail, as far as prison fan mail, you know what I'm saying. Any celebrity got locked up, Charles Manson got the most fan mail. So, I'm just thinking about, so these guys have fans. I know they got to have some crazy fans. Because, you know, no, Justin Bieber got crazy stalker still fans. still ain't even seen the tip of the iceberg of the oh. crazy fan. They're going to they gonna elaborate on more of that. Okay. <laughs> so, with him being this serial killer and he has this crazy fucking fan 
that was just obsessed with them. I was like, damn, that is so... Because I couldn't figure out how to do it. And I see the way they did it. I was like, that's how you fucking do it. So that kept me into it, watching their relationship and shit. Like, because it was just... Amazing. I just I could not figure out how to... How do I do this? How do I make the meat? How do I... I came up with all these different ideas and shit. And seeing the way they did it, that's how you fucking do it. They just threw it, it in there. They legit, they ain't easing in there. The girl ended up with the same everything oh, yeah. and some. She ended up, she was technically more stronger than he was. Mm-hmm. Way more. But she was so fascinated with this dude. Yeah. If you keep looking at it, it does get a little redundant because of the game plan. Yeah. And it's going to be the same type of game plan. Did you ask me to watch this shit because the dude sits funny and I sit funny? That what it is. No, I felt, that is hilarious. I felt though. insulted. No, <laughs> no, that's, like, no, that's, look at this that's, nigga. That's, ah, that is fucking hilarious. I was like, is this why they wanted me to watch this shit? Is this why? And they, you said that, that kept, <laughs> nigga. No. Shit, funny as a bitch, nigga. No. Hey, Cause it's a lot of funny shit about it. Keeps like the nigga answered the phone. And he had this shit like this. Like he got them. <laughs> like, like, just dangling like he ain't really wanted to touch Tom, it. Yeah, yeah, like he holding a fucking wet napkin or something. He nigga holding the phone like a wet napkin. Like, be like, hello. <laughs> no, it just it's just the mind, the way that it kind of flipped you into. They introduced the good guy as the bad guy, like he was the antagonist, and they introduced oh, okay. the the antagonist as the protagonist. And and it legitimately still the whole way through, you're still rooting for the bad guy. Because you just wanna see the story progress or you just wanna see like, is he really gonna go that hard? Yeah, it is he gonna go that hard. You know what's weird is when I'm watching this shit, I guess cause that's why that's why I, cause I'm not maybe that's what it is. I'm not Emotionally invested in any of the characters, I feel I'm watching this shit the same way. What's his name? Ryuku, the uh, the Shinagami. Oh yeah, no emotion, no nothing, just sitting. Yeah, I'm watching outside it. of laughing at the yeah. dumbness. It's like, like <laughs> the same, the, the exact same way. Like I'm bored, so I'm watching this shit. Cause that's like really what the whole fucking premise is. Mm-hmm. He got bored and decided and to shake watching. shit up, mm-hmm. and he's watching because he's bored. And that's really how I feel. Like I'm just watching y'all. Cause I'm bored, and he's he's legit can end it whenever he wants, wants to, whenever he wants to. He already told him from Jump Street. Oh, when it's over, I'm writing your name in this book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be the one to write your name in the damn book. He told you that from Jump Street. But yeah, it's great, man. It's still good. It's going to get you're going to hit when it hit this mid season breakish light, and what happens, and you're going to be like. It's going to start over. But now he's going to be a little older. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. He's going to be a little older. They're they going to like kind of fast forward you through a couple of years. But the base is going to still be kind of the same. Have you it's seen the um, the live action joint? Mm-mm-mm-mm. Okay. Mm-mm-mm. I, mean, I just wondered if it was Mm-mm-mm. worth a damn. Oh, they got a live action one? Yeah, it looks pretty... I mean, like, the look of it. I haven't I seen... Have, I didn't I watch have. a preview of it, but I've been like... I saw stills of it, and it looks yeah, pretty official. Because fucking uh, Mortal Kombat fucked it up for me. Street Fighter fucked it up for me. All these live action shits, like that's what kept me from looking at um, the new Street Fighter, the ones that came out on the internet. Those were good. The IGN, I just didn't give them a chance because I'm like, yo, I've been. Don't it look like the, the series with a uh, Ryu and Ken training? Yeah, Ken Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Dragon Ball Z. It's fucking horrible. I mean, what Dragon Ball was just horrible. I mean, well, Dragon Ball sucked when it was a cartoon. This is... It just has a special spot space. in my heart because I had to wake up dumb, stupid early to see it. And so, yes. It's almost like, you know what? If they did a goddamn live action Sailor Moon, I'd probably watch that shit. Well, they don't. They have a new movie. Okay. All right. <laughs> if they did a live action Sailor Moon, I mean, I don't know. And I'm debating on this goddamn Power Rangers shit real hard. Debate, nigga, I'm there. Debate. I'm debating <laughs> on this shit really hard because I want to take my my daughter and go see it because for some reason she's 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 interested in the same stuff. I and like we got the same music taste. Really? Like literally? Because I, I take my um, my Apple. I know random, but I take my phone and whatever albums I get that's edited decently or and they're they're not more so of a beat 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 type shit. I give her the songs, and legit, when I look at her favorite list or listen to the songs she's playing over, she's playing the same songs I like. 
Like what? Like what? What song? Uh, like I don't know. You don't listen to Andy Minio or uh, the Social Club. Um, man, they're the gospel rapper, right? I guess if you want to consider that, yes, sir. Then that's a yes. Yes. Oh, so you do listen to them? Nah, 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 I'm saying that's a yes is in their gospel there. Yeah, I guess if that's what you want to say. Yeah. So I do Social Club Misfits. Like, she got that. She got, um... Uh, I gave her <laughs> the Black Moon and the Nat Turner. Interesting. Yeah, man. Um, She's eight now, right? Seven. Seven. Yeah, okay. seven. When's her birthday? Uh, July. July. What does she get? I wasn't too far off. No, no, no. What does she get? I tried to find an edited version of that, but they ain't got that. The internet. They ain't got no edited version? No. Not not up on um on iTunes. Not that I found it yet. Do you have uh, all their albums or just the one? Just that one. Oh, no. Just that one. Just that one. But yeah, she got Fern from out of Miami. He the other half of the misfit. Oh, okay. But yeah. And then she got Marty. That's the other half. She do Andy Minio Lecrae. She got all of Lecrae stuff. But yeah. But she just, she end up picking the same songs that I listen to. It's hilarious. And no mind you, she don't drive with me often. She like, like we're not in the same car that much. So it ain't like she's hearing me play these songs over. It's just, when she's walking around with her headphones in, I can hear it. And I'm like, oh, I like this song too. And then she'll come to me and be like, Dad, do you like such and such? And I was like, no, you got to play it. I ain't good with names. She play it. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I listen to that. I listen to that all the time. It's on my playlist. And yeah, it's dope. Do you ever, like, think about some of the uh, unhealthy obsessions you had when you were a kid and be like, dang, I hope my kids don't end up with these? Because it's the how you talking about how your daughter is with music and shit, and it's like, yo, I don't think I'd wish the way that we were addicted to music. I wouldn't really wish that on anybody. And especially the way when I was a kid, like something like at seven years old, if she was addicted to music the way that I was at seven, that shit. Not but loud. it's different levels to it, though. I See, at been, seven, at I, seven, at was seven, you addicted to the lyrics was, or the beats or what would you? Both. I was. See, I didn't break down lyrics because a lot of stuff I didn't understand, especially during our time. You had Wu Tang. I didn't have nobody to explain this stuff to me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, I wouldn't know what the shit meant, but goddamn it. I yes, was, and so I won't really end, but I, you couldn't tell me shit about no producers. I was only, on yeah. I was only like a motherfucker with producers. Now, I could tell a goddamn beat from out of nowhere, man. But, um, that was my first love was beats. Like, I just, man, just loved the beats. I, just, I remember being like six years old, and uh, my mom had the Trespass soundtrack. And they had that Night by Nature song on that shit. Doom, de doom, 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 doom. I remember like one day, this is what I'm saying, I'm unhealthy. I remember one night I went to sleep thinking about the song and couldn't stop thinking about the song. Then when I woke up, I had uh, got ready for school and shit, and I asked mom, like, yo, can I borrow your trespass tape? And I took the tape into my room and was playing that song until it was time to go to school. Over and over. over and over again. The first song I ever did that. Well, the first album was uh, All Eyes On Me, Tupac. Well, oh, damn, it was, it was kind of mature by then. That was, what, 12 years old? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was late because I, I, I listened to jazz. Nigga, I listened to Grover Washington for <laughs> the longest, dude. The longest. So I, I didn't, I ain't saw getting into hip-hop till later. Oh, late, see. late, later. See, my thing was I was always a hip-hop head, but I didn't realize it. To me, I was just, I like music. I didn't realize that I was just watching, I, mean, I was just listening to rap. Yeah, like, yeah. nigga, you can play a Sade album. I swear I probably know the majority of them. But you didn't like Sade. I don't. <laughs> but it's because my dad. My dad will play that shit repeatedly. That enigma, fucking the art of noise, all that shit, repeatedly. And then don't help that I'm playing saxophone in elementary school. So now it's just like, yeah, all I got is that kind of music and then concert music in my head. That was it. So, wait a minute, so you didn't start listening to rap? You didn't start really becoming a hip-hop head until 12? Like, whoa. Probably about, about middle schoolish. That's when you first started listening to rap? No, that's when I became a hip-hop, hip-hop head. head. Oh, yeah, yeah. You always listen to rap. I mean, damn, I can't sit there and tell you I ain't heard her damn Dougie Fresh and, 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 and Slip Rick and shit like that. Like, my uncles played all that damn Big Daddy Kane stuff. 
and John Fleming. Like me personally, my first album I ever bought was uh, uh, was it Jizzle vs. Genius? And I swear to God, I bought that shit just because of the fucking cover. Cover was sweet as a bitch. Yeah, I, that was the only fucking reason I bought that shit. That was shit with the, they was like on a chessboard mm-hmm. and it was all scrapping. Yeah. yeah. That shit, man, it was just for the cover. And then that's when, that was the whole Wu-Tang introduction I didn't man, realize. I'm going to keep it 100. When it came to Wu-Tang when I was a kid, they confused the shit out of me. Simply because I never knew <laughs> whose album I was listening to. Mm-mm. I never knew who was on the songs. It was just like, all I know is either it's Wu or it's Nat Wu. I could just hear, it, okay, this is one of those. So it's like, and it was like, all them niggas was coming out, like, what was like three albums a year, basically? Like, you know what I'm saying? Don't get me lying. Like, Method Man, Genius, and Into the Wu-Tang, all that in the same year? Don't get me lying. I won't lie to it you. Was just, I won't lie to you. It was just too much going on. I they were just like... And all you would know was the niggas was the woo. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wu-Tang. Oh, woo. And, and they shit. always was on each other's shit. Like, and all of it was produced by RZA, so all the albums sounded, you know what I'm saying, similar. I ain't gonna say they all sounded the same, because it was all very different. But it was just like, when I was a kid, I couldn't tell. It, had, it still had that sound. Yeah. It had that RZA sound before RZA became Bobby Digital. So when niggas started talking about, oh, yeah, this album, that album, nigga, I don't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? Shit crazy. The first time I was able to hear a Wu album and actually could tell, okay, this is that particular album was a. Uh, what was first, Forever or um, Supreme Clientele? Forever was Forever. Forever. Forever so, had to be first. Yeah, because Supreme Clientele was 99, right? Shit, I don't know. It could have been late 98. Because I think uh, Iron Man was 97 mm-hmm. and Forever was 96. Mm-hmm. Uh, Google it. Google it. Google it. Mm-hmm. And Supreme Clientele is another one you got damn can't keep me don't let nobody borrow that shit you ain't getting it back no, 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 no. <laughs> I done bought three copies of that bitch it just keeps walking up out of the house uh, I still ain't got that junk uh, I put money though I'm going vinyl hunting here by the end of the month I'm going digging did I uh show you uh, vinyl days mm-mm oh uh, yeah they said they uh be selling Really good condition shit. Yeah, I gotta go digging. Uh, Cause I went by DJ. You know, old school DJs off of um, Tide Water. Used to be giant, big as a bitch. And Tide Water. That shit gone, ain't it? No, nah, it's 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 next to it. So where the Family Dollar is now, that used to be DJ, mm-hmm. is right next to it. It's in the smaller section, mm-hmm. right next to it. Oh, but it's still there, and it still it looked like Broadway. Well, in that motherfucker gone now. He's gone now? Yeah, probably gone, bro. Uh, last time I checked, it was... So, what? Uh, it's just... He just still got all the stuff up, but no, he gone. Uh, oh, it's clean gone. Uh, I told myself, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go there at the end of... I mean, at the beginning of this month. The motherfucker was gone. Because I knew he was yeah, shutting down. Yeah, I'm proud of the brother. Because, I mean, like, I kind of... I kind of wanted him to retire. Because it was like, I was, you know, he, you go in there, he, he shoot the shit with you. He let everybody know. Like, you know, shit ain't, shit ain't too tight. I remember he was like talking about, I'm about to cut this shit in half. Then he came back, then he cut that motherfucker in half. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Just, um, to get his rent lower, you know? That shit, man. Damn. But I'm mad, though, because now, since since he got them records and shit back, it's like, I realized how precious this shit was. Mm-hmm. And I just ran across the fucking hip-hop creep. Oh, so you just now getting to your shit. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Just now getting into my shit. I'd have been in the oldie but goodie section for so damn long. I'm just now getting into my oh, shit. I'm sorry. We're right a little bit of context. Like I, I totally forgot we recorded the podcast. Oh. <laughs> to give a little context here, uh, a long time ago, I bought a turntable about 2005, and Booby let me borrow. Bullshit. You, it was that late before you bought yours? Mm-hmm, 2005. Yeah. Damn, what I had mine for what? A couple years. You didn't get yours after high school. Exactly. Oh, fuck. Yikes. My people want to let me have them motherfucking turntables, nigga. Man, the fuck? damn. I had my shit since like something like one or two. You trying to do something you like? Fuck well, that shit. <laughs> I catch you having fun, nigga. <laughs> you trying to learn something? <laughs> it don't come with a book? Yeah, it's like that was about 2005 and uh, yeah, and the general boss was kind enough to lend me his whole entire Record collection. The fuck? Hold on, Lynn. I gave it away. Gave yeah, it back I just, to you. And I just gave him his shit back plus all of the shit that I had collected. 
Yeah. So yeah. God bless you, sir. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah. It, Comedy it albums, classicals. Yeah. Gospels. It's a lot of shit. Man. Got a lot of sample golds in there, like yeah. like yeah. Yeah. That Michael Jackson album that people don't even know no, exists. Uh, yeah, no shit. Yeah, I found that shit. This a whole album? <laughs> like, Mom, you ever seen this? What? Hold on. What's that, baby? It's a Michael Jackson solo album on Motown. What? what? <laughs> Hold on, baby. I ain't never heard of none of these songs. Oh, like, where, where were we at on time? 96, Iron Man. So Iron Man was 96, yeah. Mm-hmm. Supreme Quartel, 2000. Fuck. 2000? Damn. Oh, wow. I thought it was 99. You know like it's what? a big nah, fucking difference. It couldn't. It couldn't have been because Eminem was fucking killing it. But Eminem was not two thousand. Eminem and DMX was damn near what? What? Yeah, they both did. Uh, they both promoted ninety seven and came out ninety eight. And, and they both then, dropped two albums ninety eight. No, uh-uh. Eminem dropped one. Eminem just had Slim Shady LP in ninety eight. And what was his next with Marshall in two thousand? Damn, he went two years. Yeah. Because he was eating off of goddamn the real Slim Shady. He was eating off of that Man. shit. He didn't have to goddamn drop another one. Damn. Because he, he had that jank on Missy song. Um, well, I do pop pills and keep my two not, socks fit. Yes. Pop the same shit they that got, got Tupac, Tupac killed. Kill. Yeah, yeah, man. I was like, ah. It's so means that's another reason that you probably thought because he was like, he was staying around. Yeah, he had a man, hell he of did. features. Cause then he ain't telling me shit. Lyricist Lounge shit dropped some more time in that that time frame yeah. too. Uh, ooh, and then we probably found Infinity in the midst of that. Damn man, I miss those days. Well, I didn't find Infinity until two thousand seven. That's when I found. Yeah, when I, that's my first. Oh shit! Yeah, uh-huh, that's my first got my hands on it. I mean, I heard songs off of it, but actually having the whole I'm project. Say, no, I, I ain't never seen the real project. Oh yeah, I, I got that somewhere around here. Oh, word, word. You had the real CD. Yeah. Oh, no, nah, fuck no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Uh-uh. I don't know. We had something on the tapes or some shit. Somebody played the whole shebang on the radio or something. We had I said something. I had, I had pieces of it, but I never Dude, had the whole yo, you shit. You know what's crazy? I went through my shoes because I'm about to get rid of a lot of my shoes and my shoe boxes and shit. And I found my, um, my goddamn old tape, old tapes box. Wow. It was like my DMX and, and and my Eminem and my goddamn mob murder music. I didn't realize, yo, I probably bought that album about ten fucking times. Murder music? Yep. Hell yeah. Because yeah. I got three of the CDs in my CD book. Is that the album that you bought the most? Because mine is Supreme Clientele. I bought no, Supreme Clientele say, probably three or four times. That would probably be, they would probably be what, what? Supreme Clientele and then murder music mm-hmm. would probably be about what, what? You just gotta have it in your collection. Yeah. I know. I think. I think. I think it's safe to say that uh, Supreme Clientele is the best rap album ever recorded. It's pretty uh, safe to say that. You yeah. know what? I had to drop a couple notches. I, I had to take completely out of that thought out of the top ten conversation was uh, the Marshall Matters LP. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it's like I listened to it recently and it. Nah, didn't... it was situational. It was. It was just for that time period. Yeah, that's it exactly. Was just for the time that is exactly what I was about to say. Because it has so much shock factor and all that shit in it. Yeah. Who that is? That's Naomi, aka Naomi. Trinity. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, we were also watching wrestling. Yeah. I gotta get you back wanna... in my wrestling life. I've yeah. been out since forever. Yeah, if you want to know why I just lost my complete train of thought, Google Trinity Far Two. Yeah. That, uh... <laughs> Grand. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Eminem, uh, the Slim, the Marshmallows LP was very, it didn't age well at all. Like, I tried to listen to it recently, and I was just like, I was, I was thinking about how much I'd be playing shit for my nephews, like, listen to this, y'all know what I'm about this. Like, I couldn't play, if, if I played it to him, they'd be like, the fuck is he talking about? Uh, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Ooh. Oh, did you listen to that goddamn Rosenberg fucking Dewan Elk Big Pun tribute? No. Oh my gosh, bro. Who's Dewan Elk? Wind up is is Rosenberg and um Cypher Sounds podcast. Oh no, nah. oh, yeah. Wine Epstein, that's what it's called. Right. Oh man, I sent it on the group, Jane. Did you? Yes. Oh, okay, I didn't see it. Bruh, when I tell you, I didn't know. I knew Pun was great, but now that I can like the way rap is going now, is it made me deep into lyrics, and so it's like yeah, because I got a hunt for. 
joints now. It ain't like I gotta listen to Ghostface and be like, yo, let me find out what Ghost talking about. Let me do this, let me do that. Like, I only did that with my favorite rappers, like Ghostface, and then I had broke like things with, with DMX, like you had to listen to interviews and get shit done through him because he's talking about situations and XYZ. But now that I listen to niggas like Royce the Five Nine and shit like that, that's just the random. I mean, is, is it me? Is Royce been boring since like 2004? He's been boring as shit. Like I can't listen to, I can't, I can't listen to, I can't listen to him. He is about as boring as Lupe is boring. Yeah, that's a boring ass nigga too. But it's still they're great at what they do. The skill level is still high. I mean, get the excitement book. level is low. Skill level high, excitement level low. Yeah, that's true. And but it means that's the that's the cannabis effect. Yeah, like Joe Button. Decent skill level. Nah, Same. Joe Button. No, I mean he, he's calm, or is he just but he's not boring. No, but it's like he he's calm when he's rapping. He's not boring though. Like his his shit is still entertaining. You can I can yeah. still you can still yeah. I can still listen to Joe Budden and, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not bored. Like, the other niggas, they just boring. Like, there's nothing there. Like, you can hear Joe, Joe Budden go through the emotion and shit. Like, you can hear, like, you know what I'm saying? When he's mad on the track, he's mad. When he's writing some some cool shit, he's being cool. When he's writing some trouble, you can hear that he's troubled and shit. You know, so it's not... It's All right, so you haven't heard layers from Royce 5 now then. Exactly. It's okay, just, so this is his real personal album. So he, he's giving you the stories where he first met him. He's giving you his son. Oh, is this that shit that came out last year? This is, yes, is that thing? Okay. Last year or year before last year? I don't mean, year before, like 2015. It, came out like right No, Nick, it might not have been that long. It might have, but whatever. But Layers, Layers is good. It's personal. It's personal. It's almost, I guess, to the effect, like you told me to listen to Big Sean, so I went back. I had a stick man that told me, like, yo, start with this mixtape. So he was like, he made me listen to Detroit. Because I was like, yeah, man, my stick man, man, he a real hip-hop head. And he's telling me that Big Sean is his his shit. If he had to pick from the, the, the newer regime, Big Sean's numero uno for him. And I'm like, what? I didn't understand. Because I'm like, yo, I hear his feature verses, and I'm like, sometimes he hit a miss with me. And so he told me start with Detroit. So I listened to Detroit. He told me when it came out, and I'm like, okay. Listen to Detroit. I'm like, okay, yeah. He gives me a lot of, um, I don't know if you ever listened to 3-6, the hard, but Lil White. No. Uh, oh, God. No, don't do, no. No, just the pattern, not just, just the no, pattern. Nothing, the cadence, the cadence. Nothing, no. The cadence. We're not comparing him to Lil White. It's the cadence, Lil White man. Is straight, 100% garbage. It's but you know what's funny, cadence. though? The I only... fuck with Lil White, so that's why right. you gotta let me, at least let me have that, because shit, otherwise, I ain't got nothing for him. <laughs> Not on the but you know who um he really sounded like Demito, and then and it was funny because it was like it's one of those things where it's like you can't be mad at somebody for saying something you if they're right. A long time ago, there was a, a big like the, the big hot topic was I think it was like 2010, 2011. But Soldier Boy said, "I changed the game." And everybody got mad at it, nigga. Like, nigga, you ain't changed. But when you think about it, mm-hmm. he changed the fucking game because it was like a lot of motherfuckers came out rapping, sounding like Soulja Boy. But it was like Soulja Boy sucks. But all these dope rappers came after him, rapping the same way he was rapping. Like, also all that motherfucker. I'm sorry, dope rappers. Yeah. Or just like hits and shit came out. Nicki Minaj was rapping like Soulja Boy. Big Sean was rapping like Soulja Boy. Drake was rapping like Soulja Boy. A lot of them motherfuckers do that shit. Okay, the meat, so it's like, what it is? I'm listening. I'm sorry. Well, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can understand you what you're saying, though. The commercial end of it. Yeah, well, you're going, no, not even that. I'm like, this, 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 the way that these niggas be started rapping when they would be rapping like this and be, this, 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 that was Soulja Boy started that shit. He was start, started with the pretty boy swag. Uh, it, you know? yeah. Then, like, everybody started doing that shit. So you can hear Drake doing it, mm-hmm. that damn nigga. Like, everybody started doing that shit. But it was like a lot of shit that Soulja Boy did that was just whack as a bitch. But then dope rappers came in and they started doing the shit way better than he was doing it. But yeah, Big Sean was one of them. Whereas, like, because that's one of the things. Like, somebody told me one time that Big Sean reminded him of Soulja Boy. And I was like, how? But then when I listened to him, like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. He does, yeah. So I gave him, so that's the only whack rapper I would allow to be compared to... 
give it a chance. Just go listen to a couple of Lil White. Don't listen yeah. to what he's talking about. Because all he's talking it's about here is 3 6. He had his chance back when I was in high school. That's so what you tried? I mean, like, he, this shit was on. It was on. Like, you know, I used to. I told you, it was an unhealthy obsession with hip hop music. Mm-hmm. So I used to just put on Rap City and just watch the whole fucking episode, commercials and all, just to get to like one song. So anything that. He was, was on Rap City? Yeah, they had uh, three six. With three six up there, yeah. he was yeah, 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 yeah. Especially if they had the boob going off, yeah. And that too, they had an episode and they was in the boob. Yeah, that makes sense. God, it was terrible. It makes sense. It was probably terrible for us then. Go back and listen to it now, and be like, yo, bars, <laughs> hot fire, spitting that. Yeah, so uh, there's that. So, man, so you say you 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 did watch the Jim Jones interview. How, how far did you get? I only watched that snippet of the whole when he started snapping about um, what he's done for and did for Dipset. And oh, that's the beginning was. of the shit. Yeah, so I, 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 I didn't. Yeah, that shit an hour and a half long. Yeah, I got to look at it. The know. thing is, like, it was a, a lot of people were putting, I was like scrolling down my social medias and I just kept seeing people talk about the Jim Jones shit. You know, like, you see one person talk about it, you'll ignore it. And you see, like, five people all talking about, like, Oh, I got so much more respect for Jim Jones. Dude, set run deep, man. But it's like one police acting like they. Oh man, I didn't know Jim Jones was like that. And, uh, Jim Jones is. I have so much respect for him now. So I'm like, let me watch this interview. And I don't. Why they say I, you got so much respect? For him? That's what I want to figure out. Because I I watched the interview. And I'm just like, is but, this shit like new information for them or like? Because he dropped some anger tears. But the shit is so the the the, shit, the interview was so long. I don't think it's just that one little snippet that got everybody talking about. Because everybody kept saying, "Fucking just watch the interview before they started making memes out of him crying and shit." That's all. Just so oh, I didn't even see the memes about him. Yeah, crying. they tried to make him the new Jordan, and it's not gonna happen. Oh no, 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 because them tears was like they was anger, there was anger and frustration type deal. That's like yo, I'm about to punch you in your fucking face. <laughs> Like, nigga, I don't I want to. I want to punch life in the face right now. Got yeah, you. yeah, that's what that shit was. Like, nigga, I really don't want to, but you're going to make me punch you in your shit. That's all. Man, hey, I ain't taking that from, from him tearing off like that. I know um, he was saying stuff like he uh, he wasn't mad at uh, nobody for nothing because he said some, some shit that's, like, real that I've had to say to people before. And they, um, they wonder, like, why I'm not mad. It's because it's like he was somehow... All this, he said, all the dirt that uh, Cam did to him, he expected it because he knew him from way back. He's like, we we met, we was like eight years old. So I watched him do this shit to other people. You got to be a fool to see somebody doing other people dirty, and then you think he ain't never gonna do you dirty. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but but say that type of shit was like, you know, you watch motherfuckers' behavior, you are gonna see that shit coming. And he was like, I think it was probably like why everybody was saying they got mad respect for him because he just was talking about how he's not mad at nobody. He was really like giving all of them props and shit. Okay, so, question, right? What's up? Learned this early. I learned this real early. Now, if you watch somebody fuck another nigga over, uh-huh. so you automatically know that you're not off limit to the fucking. Right. Why even be around that motherfucker? And me, myself, I do not fuck with people that fuck are like that. Yeah, like. I'm not, yeah. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I've seen people fuck people, and then I watch people hang with that person, and then still they end up getting fucked. And it's like the worst, the worst. I, I, no matter of fact, I've been fucked yeah. like that. It's like yo, you know what? I'm thinking our friendship gonna be a whole lot more than than a dollar could goddamn hold up. Shit, motherfucking dollar, goddamn win every time. Thing that be getting me. Is when niggas do another motherfucker dirty and then come to you and like laugh about it with you. Nah, nah, fuck I'm just nah. like, oh, yeah, okay, nah. just let me know who the fuck you is. Yeah, let me, let me chill yeah, out a nah. bit, fuck step nah. back a bit. You know what I'm saying? Y'all niggas crazy, man. Like, wow. I don't get that shit. I don't get that shit. Like how people be slipping shit out of people's pockets and shit. Yeah, yeah. I don't get that shit. I'm like. But you know, and this, uh, this other shit, like, I don't, because it's, it's another thing I don't fuck with. I don't fuck with petty ass hustlers. Like, them niggas that risk a lot for a little bit, them niggas ain't stable. And it's like, them motherfuckers, they, like, they in it for the short and not for the long. You know what I'm saying? Like, a motherfucker that, uh, like, 
I'll put myself in like when I'm when I like I used, I had to stop doing this shit because I decided to stop uh, manipulating people. But uh, one of the things I stay stop testing people because like one of my um, flaws is I test people then I punish them for failing, but they would never fail if I didn't test them. But it's like I do shit like I make myself seem more vulnerable than I am, or I like test motherfuckers like okay let me see how they handle this situation first before I do something big. So it's like on some shit like I want to bring you a job that's going to pay you $500. But before that, let me come to you with something that's going to get you paid like $30 and see how you act with this $30 job. And if you got damn bullshit around with a $30 job, you're not getting this $500. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I do shit like that. Is that wrong? No. It's almost like testing the waters. Yeah, but it's like I do it all the time with a bunch of shit. I'll like let myself seem more... Like I'll walk into a situation and make myself appear weak just to see... You know, and I won't... You know, like I'll, I'll like let shit slide. I won't stand up for myself just for the purpose of seeing like who's... Like the only person that will pick on... That will like take advantage of my weakness is an asshole. That's going to let me know not to fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so that's where, where a lot of people will be like, Damn, you so quiet. Because I done learned early not to fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? And I've seen, and it's like one of those things where like I've seen it happen a lot where it's like people will be like, I'll deem them, like I said, I'll test them and they'll fail the test. And I'll be right. Like I'm, I'm not wrong when I like test people and they fail and shit. So I'm not overreacting. I'll be like, okay, they got them, they, they showed me they shady so I'm not going to fuck with them. But it's be like, I always do it when I'm like new somewhere. It's like when I'm new to, I'm going to a new job or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll come in there quiet as hell. Is that not wrong though? No. I mean, but it's because of who I am and what I can do and the effect that I can have on people, it's fucked up. Yeah. Okay. So, I had this discussion with my sister because my sister, me and my sister had this discussion. I had a discussion and she was just like, yeah. And I, and I, for some reason, I was thanking her for uh, me being the man that I am, because when I was growing up, I was small, and she hated the fact that I could walk in a room and be intimidated. She hated that shit, so she would pretty much like bully me at home so much that, like, yo, you can't be worse than this nigga that I live with. God, you can't be, you can't be worse than this nigga that I live with. And she she will always put me aside and be like, yo, you know. Let nobody do this. Don't let nobody do that. You know what I'm saying? You don't do that. And so I thank her for what's the name. But she was like, yeah, you, until you got the smell of yourself. I was like, well, thank you. Because you're the reason why when I walk in a room, I know I have complete control of what's going on in this fucking room. Like, I have control of it. Not yet. If I got to manipulate my way or if I got to goddamn pretty much strap it out, scrap it out. Like, yeah, I, I can control what goes on. It was like, yeah. Sorry, I don't know what else to tell you, but I don't see why it's wrong for you knowing that you, like in my head, this is what I label the king shit. And it's like, don't, why do you tone it down? Or why do you feel bad for doing what you, you have to do in a, a predicament? Because regardless, they're going to end up following you anyway. Exactly. So it's like, uh, I, I don't I can go in there and be intimidated. I can go in there and be scared. And everybody's going to be fucking scared. Yeah, but it's like... The type of shit I be doing... It's just... I don't know. I think it's probably because of the label. Because it's like... I'm testing people that don't even know they've been tested. I mean, like... And I'm not even on some shit like... I think it's the shock factor. Have you ever shocked somebody to the point where it's like... They thought you were one person. And then they realized that no. they were lying to themselves the whole time. Mm-hmm. So seeing Not that since shock, I was dumb, dumb, young. Yeah. So seeing that shocking people repeatedly, and it's like I don't know. It's kind of like dumb, dumb, young. I don't, I don't know how to put it because it's one of those things where it's like I, I, may, I, I can make people feel like a speck of dust. Like I have that power to make people just feel like nothing, and I'm like the skinniest dude. I'm I'm not I'm the geekiest looking skinniest dude in the world. I'm not intim- I'm not I'm not physically intimidating, but I can make anybody feel like a piece of dirt. And just insignificant. And I have that power. And it's like, and it's kind of like, it was one of those things where it's just not fair. That, you know what I'm saying? I'm, that I'm, I was, and this, and it's kind of like, because really they're doing it to themselves, really. Because it's like, but it's, it's being a, it's kind of like being a judge, jury, executioner kind of thing. Where it's like, mm-hmm. I'm, I would meet people and decide. You know the judgment. 
Yeah, it's like I'll meet people and decide you're not worth Garen. You're not you're not worth knowing me. Yeah. You know, I'm a great person. You don't deserve to know me. Right. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to just fuck it, just go out and just be me. Because especially because it's like I'm also cheating myself out of just being who I want to be. Because I really, really like since I was a kid, I've always been like I want to be the nice kid and want to be nice and you know what I'm saying. But that shit always fucking backfires. But yeah, cool. That's all. Yeah, you know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause it was, but it's like, and it's just like, well, why am I not? And it's just because people are dicks, and I'm, you know what I'm saying? It's one of the things like I, I had to learn to stop, stop getting mad at assholes for being assholes. They're assholes. It's what they do. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get mad at a snake for biting you. It's a snake. You knew it was a snake. snake. You know snakes bite. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're going to stay the fuck away from it. Man, just don't get mad at the snake for doing what it does. Right. You know, same thing with assholes. That's what I'm saying. I was like, I kept punishing assholes for being assholes, but you're an asshole. You're punishing yourself. Yeah, but some people don't deserve to be assholes. You know what I'm saying? What like, you mean? Maybe they look they supposed to be better than assholes, or maybe they need to be resented. It's just they need to see another route. Well, and that's what I'm asshole. saying. It's like with with me. So like with with me, my personality, people have the either they either fucks with me or they run from me. But regardless, I get the respect. Like, if they not, people know that I don't accept in my fucking eyesight shit that's not, not what I deem right. I'm not one of them, them, yo, you still in your eye, what the fuck is you doing? I'm, I'm not one of them, them guys that's going to let you be comfortable with that shit. Not around me. Fuck no. Nah. So what they end up happening is if you, when you make that decision to be like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing the shit that, that be doing. So I'm just gonna stay away from him. It's cool, but whenever we see each other, yo, what up, B? Yeah, man, how you been? I'm good. I'm good. Everything guy and stuff. But then you got the ones that do be around, and they they either take the my mouth and they make some kind of progress or changing, or they change. Yeah, see, in your situation that you're describing, it's kind of like people get to go on by their business and they just be alright. But the way Yeah, they avoid me like the fucking play. Yeah, but the way my shit roll, I make motherfuckers just feel like they ain't worth shit. Like I just make them when they when they around me, they'll just feel like what's wrong with me? Like you know what I'm saying? Like what was am I not good enough? What the fuck? Man. Which a lot of times turns into hatred. I made some enemies like that too. Where it's not even say enemies, but made people like straight up just not like me because it's kinda yeah. like it's one of those things where it makes them feel like, Oh, you think he better than me? Like, nah, I just don't fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You've already shown that you're not to be trusted, not to be around. Not to be fucked with. Yeah, not, not to be fucked with. with. You know what I'm saying? Not yeah, on so. a good term. Like, no, you're just not to be fucked with. with. Yeah. You're not my steez. Yeah. And so it's like I'm saying, it's one of the things, like I said, you're punishing assholes for being assholes and really assholes punish themselves. So there's no need for me to, you know what I'm saying? So tell me this, right? When you have done these tests, have anybody ever changed? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, They've changed their tune, but they haven't changed. See, I guess I'm... I'm I mean, like... Yeah, like they're, they're they're assholes, but they'll change their tune to want to be cool with me, but still be an asshole to other people. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, they change their tune, so when they get around me, they... So, they try to be wolves with you, and then, like, yeah, yeah you, you're still not a wolf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happens to me. That's why I be... That's my term to use. Like, yo, you... You're not, you're not supposed to be over here eating with these wild dogs, man. You're still a rabbit. Like, chill out. Yeah. So it's like a chill. lot of times motherfuckers that be around me will be like, I mean, it's, yeah. nigga, it's groups, it's groups of friends that I hang with where I only fuck with like three or four of them and the rest of them, they don't see me. If it ain't, if I'm not with one of these three or four motherfuckers, y'all ain't going to see me. It's just because I don't really fuck with the other ones like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it'd be like, There'll be conversations about me when I'm not around on some shit like, damn, nigga, I don't never see Gary. He always been. The other ones where you're like, man, we see him at least once a month. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, they, and it's like, they have a bunch of people that know me, will have a conversation, they all describe me differently. Because some of them I, don't, I just don't fuck with. Yeah, well, That's I mean, like, there was a time when me and you would go months, shit, months without talking. And then but we'll have a whole sit down session and and be trying to play catch up not the same cause I'm talking about motherfuckers won't see me at all like this one I, I'm describing it to you cause you haven't experienced it 
trust. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like, this motherfucker there, I mean, like, on some stuff, like, one of my homeboys uh, had a video game. He had created the whole squad in the, in the video game. <laughs> then I realized he was a dick, and I just stopped hanging out with him. And um, from a mutual friend, her, like, you know, hey, was, he was like, hey, man, we, uh, he was, like, laughing. Like, yeah, man, he just uh, erased your character because you don't come around no more. I was just like, yeah. And it was just like so. It, I could see it bothered them, that's a, and that's the kind of shit I'm talking about. Like I didn't, I didn't cuss him out. I ain't saying it. I'm just like, you know what? I ain't fucking with that nigga no more. And he felt that shit. Like, what, like, Garrett? Garrett don't be coming they'll, around. No more. They don't come back and try to make you feel bad. Or they don't send somebody to come. They send and make you feel, Yeah, and I fucking. So they, I they fucking send they send mutual friends, but it's like I get the but the fact that I get hear it lets me know that. I'm fucking people's souls up there. You know what I'm saying? They'll, they'll meet. Garrett's a good guy. Garrett's a nice dude. Yeah, Garrett, he's, he's, he's a good dude. That's a good brother right there. Then when they don't see me no more, it makes them feel like, wait a minute, if Garrett don't fuck with me, what am I? Like, what's going on? So it, it fucks with people. Because I've done it on numerous occasions where it's just like somebody just, okay, this half of the group is cool. This half of the group, not really. You know what I'm saying? And the ones that like doing the not really sad, they be, hey man, where, what's up with Garrett? Like, why is it? Why does Garrett? So it's like, I. I get a lot of that middleman shit of people coming to me like, hey man, so and so said you did this to them? Like, it's yeah, see, always you on You put some... yourself in a new demographic too because you put yourself, well, you're not new, but when you start going, doing your thing with the battle rap, you had a whole bunch of different folk. Oh, but I don't really hang with the battle rap guys though. I, I, I know, I'm just saying though, but they still presented a lot. Yeah. That's a lot of people. I ain't got time to be. I'm 30 something man I'm, I'm damn near at this point where I don't even give a fuck about making friends no more I stopped giving a fuck about making friends <laughs> <laughs> yeah I just I, like <laughs> see I run across a lot of younger guys and it's like yo I'll be trying to you know this that and third and that's where that, that they either fuck with me or they run for me like the goddamn play is one of the hey, I'm gonna tell you some real shit the job that I have right now I have the amount of friends that I have there this is the most amount of friends I've ever had in my life like I've been like, like as far as like being like one place where I can hear like okay that's a friend that's a friend that's a friend that's a friend this is the most ever so it's like I've always not told niggas like you know I'm quiet the way I'm quiet because I really don't need whatever that shit is that makes people need to be around each other I don't have that yeah I lost that I used yeah. to have that I never had it yeah you remember when I used to hang with oh yeah he'd be like twenty five deep fucking, yeah, like, <laughs> fucking deep man and just but yeah I used I used to have have that. Yeah, that, yeah that's I lost that shit now though. Easy. Never had it. Easy. I'm no bullshit. I group chat. And long as I got my kids and my wife, I'm good, good fucking money. money <laughs> I'm good fucking money, man. Good money. And then I, I say the group chat because we had the group chat before we had the podcast. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But the yeah, the group chat shit, man, I'm good goddamn money, bro. I'm good fucking money. Great money. I cut a motherfucker quicker than some bitch, boy. Than some bitch, but yeah, we had an hour and two. Hour and two. Yeah, man. It's gonna be. It's gonna be some choppage. But it's oh, yeah, it's gonna be hella choppage. Yeah. We're cutting a lot of. Cause we got to some pretty good stuff. I'm gonna, how about to chop some of that beginning stuff yeah, the fuck fine. up out of there? That's fine with me. You know what I'm saying? Walking Dead might have to go. Oh shit, yo, yeah, I gotta get home. I still got an hour worth of Walking Dead looking. Well, it ain't gonna be an hour. Oh, about thirty five minutes. But I'm skipping the shit out of these commercials. Oh, sucky, sucky now. Hell yeah, man. All right, well, uh, this has been another episode of We, we Ain't, Ain't No, no Stupids. Stupid. And uh, we out. Yes, sir. Deuces. Deuces, baby. Get to the money. Get into the Fuckin money. Fucking these hoes. I've been sipping that drink. That I'm way too throat. I've been hitting these licks. I'ma hit a few more. I've been winning. I'm winning. I'm winning. They say I've been on the road. Whoa. Whole vacation enough, I was playing too much I free agent it up on Jamaican I puff rolling papers, I'm stuck By agar, my dosi, I made it get up I've been caking enough, like I'm baking too much And my apron is yuck, they like save me a cut But the way it's set up, these clippers ain't free And that blueprint is due, I can't save you a cut They be hating too much, you mighty mouth niggas be saying too much Low key when I'm driving that red, white, and blue And them boys in that blue try and patriot you up I don't play with them cuffs, uh That's that shit I don't like I was G before likes on IG, you got likes. Cause you feeding them hype. And they greedy tonight, you can't see what I sight. But I sight what you see. Like I'm Gucci Yoli, I got Gucci and V. ERS to the ace. Or that's A, C, and E, shit is A, B, and C. Some don't make it to T. Some don't make it to G. Daddy put him in mama. And she been in for daddy. 
They created the G, that creation was me. And I got it on lock. I created the key, and my sign is a vice. And them bitches got scales. Trying to weigh me a key, that was D O P E. Don't you P O the G. Cause she can get dirty, gets P O's and P. I'm the guy to this shit that make you P O P E's. Uh. To the money, getting to the fucking these hoes. I've been sipping that drink. I'm way too thrown. I've been hitting these licks. I'ma hit a few more. I've been winning. I'm winning. I'm winning. They say I've been on the road. Whoa.